What's up, y'all? What's going on, everybody? Y'all, we are doing a, re of a reaction. Wrong. And what? it's German reacts to top 10 reasons not to live in Germany. Our friend Felicia is hey, reacting listen, to that. If I had a lop, I would spin it. Right? Isn't that what it is? The inception is not the last scene. You spin yeah. the top. Who are we? Man, this is meta right here, guys. Inception. This is the world we live in. This is 2024 and I know. A reaction of a possible reaction. Reaction. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Top 10 reasons not to live in Germany. The YouTuber World According to Briggs has uploaded a video with exactly that title. So I'd say let's watch together and I'll let you know what I think about it as a German, which of the mentioned points are true and which ones are simply wrong. All right, so I, I follow that channel, World According to Briggs, and you know, they, he does a lot of good work with uh, his channel, Top 10 Places to Live, ten, Top 10 Places in North Carolina, Top 10 Places in uh, Europe. So this, this is bread and butter. I, I feel like the, the top 10s, you know, oh, my God, I did a top five on my other channel. My God, did the wackadoos come out. <laughs> oh, my God, did the hate start spewing. And I'm like, I, I get bet. it. I get it because a top five, top 10 is very divisive. And a lot of times people forget that it is opinionated. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like my top 10 are not going to be your top 10, most likely. And vice versa. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm going to be interested because I'm going to be watching the video, obviously, with uh, Felicia. And also, I want to hear what she has to say, because this is like super cool for me to like, oh, now we have a German German looking at that. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited for this. Yeah. Before we go back in, yes, we know. We know what happened here. Quit commenting that. We it was, heard it you the first time. Freaking freaking redacted. Yes. It was, it was she she picked a very, very sensitive name to, yeah. to, to put up there. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia, and I'm a German who has been living off and on in Cincinnati, Ohio since 2016. Top 10 reasons not to live in Germany. That's the title of a video that was uploaded just last week on a YouTube channel called World According to Briggs. So, of course, I had to watch it and see if I agree with those 10 reasons. Because as I've mentioned in my personal Q&A video two weeks ago, there definitely are things that I don't like about Germany. But then again, none of those things are the reason that I don't live there right now. For those of you who don't know this, I'm from Munich, which is in Bavaria, so the south of Germany. I was born and raised there, and I also went to college there, so I didn't leave Germany until I was 22. Initially, I only came to the US for an exchange semester, but then I ended up coming back and now I'm here as a permanent resident. But I'm not in the US because Germany is an awful place to live in. It absolutely isn't. I'm here because I personally wanted some change and because I love the American culture. But who knows, maybe this person really did find 10 reasons that I can agree with why moving to Germany isn't the best idea. Let's just watch the video together and I'll share my thoughts with you. Okay, so all right, are any early predictions of what might be on this list? You know, I, I think I think the title did its job of the video, right? It I feel like it maybe this would be more so along the lines of maybe the top 10 reasons not to move to Germany. But yeah. I don't think you're convincing Germans to leave Germany with yeah. these with these top 10 reasons yeah yeah and I, so i don't know that's i don't know maybe that might be my prediction is, is how how it comes off because i've never seen the original video obviously right right i just i just have an idea of the style of video that world according to briggs puts out and um he might ruffle some feathers i feel like yeah you know i feel like yeah i mean rightfully so it has to that's you can't just have a a top ten and not not ruffle feathers. So <laughs> case uh, in point. <laughs> yeah, I'm ex I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this, man. Let's go. So you can't really see that, but I have my laptop right here. So I'm gonna be watching it down here, and I'll put it for you right here. Okay, before I hit play, let's start with the thumbnail. 
I don't know what this woman is wearing, but it's definitely not traditional German clothing. I think the pants are supposed to look like lederhosen, lederhosen like we say, but they're definitely not. Um, looks more like a Halloween costume to me, but okay. Thumbnails aren't always about accuracy. They're not? Are you that serious? What? What? That blows my mind. No way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs. I hope you're all being safe and healthy. Remember, we're all in this together. Take care of yourself and each other. Now let's get back to roasting places. This is an international video. Today we are looking at Deutschland. Germany. Germany is probably one of the top 10 most historic countries on the planet. They have a lot of history, both good and a whole bunch of bad. The good news is they've put most of that bad about 70 years in the rearview mirror. Germany is now an economic power with a great Oktoberfest. The people... Okay, I hate it when someone says we have a great Oktoberfest. We have the Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest <laughs> yeah. is not a franchise. The real the Oktoberfest takes place in Munich, but oh well. People... We already did that video. We know it's not yeah. I Oktoberfest, it's the Oktoberfest. Every all around the world, it's just a cheap imitation. Yeah, they're like, oh no, Germany? Oh, I hear they have I have a good Oktoberfest. Like, no no no. They have the OG. Like they yeah. they started this shit. They have the Oktoberfest. Yeah. People are wonderfully welcoming, and it's a great place to visit. But like every location on this planet, it has some problems. And that's what we're looking at today. Things you might need to know before you visit Germany. Some of these things might make you not want to visit them. Some of them you just probably want to be aware of. So let's get started. Number 10. High crime. Germany has seen a rise in crime in the last five years. The country has an open door policy, which means anyone can wander into the country whenever they want. And they've learned this leads to more crime. When you can't track people down, they tend to do stupid stuff. The crime rate in Germany for 2018 was 6,710 crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's up from 4,200 per every 100,000 residents in 2014. And when the 2020 numbers come out, they're looking to be higher. There was a sharp increase in the number of murders committed in Germany with 901 murders recorded in 2018. That's the highest since 2000 when there was 930. Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen had the highest regional crime rates in the whole country. Ask any German like I did and they will tell you it all changed in 2015. <laughs> About the same time, hundreds of thousands of refugees began entering the country from warned horns, Syria and other places like that. The number of murders increased by 14.6% and the unauthorized use of another person's body rose by 8%. You know what that is? I can't say it because I don't want to get demonetized. Okay. Let's stop right here because this was already a whole lot of information and I have a lot to say about this because a lot of these things are just flat out wrong. So let's back up and go over it together. I'm going to mention some numbers and just to give you guys an idea of what ballpark we're in, Germany is generally considered a very safe country compared to other countries in the world. An indicator for this is often the murder rate and in 2018 there were 1.1 murders per 100,000 residents in Germany while there were five five per 100,000 residents in the US. So almost five times as many as in Germany. Number 10. Oh my goodness. Now, but okay, hear me, hear me out on this. Like you have your cities. Cities have bad areas across the country, across the globe. You're talking the United States, right? No, I'm or talking about all, the, all the, the, world, the globe. All the world. Yeah. Like the globe. The, some parts of cities are, are, are just not desirable to to wander through you got to keep your wits about you you know yeah. and and they're melting pots so i'm just saying like it would be like comparing the 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 or basing the murder rate of baltimore and just being like oh no us is not safe because in baltimore there's a killing or a stabbing usually three or four times a day and, and then just applying that across the board, like where you have Minnesota, which has like 10 people living in it, you know, it, it's you can't. I don't know, man. I don't think that's a obviously that's a huge piece of uh, it could be mis misconstrued very easily. Right. And I know a lot of people in the comments are going to come after you and be like, well, U.S. has higher uh, 
crime and murder rates compared to the rest of the world. But I, I get what you're saying. It's like you can't just single out one area and apply it to every other yeah. place. I know no, that's what you're trying to. I think that's what yeah. you're trying to say. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's like yeah, yeah. like you you got Baltimore. You can't compare it to some little podunk town in Minnesota. Not. Mm-hmm not comparable so i mean i understand but when you talk about this kind of stuff that's that's a tough one i feel like it's where you are i knowing the what is it the murder rate doesn't dissuade me from going to a country because that's a given Mm -hmm. there's bad people everywhere yeah that's a that's a given that that murder rate thing doesn't like oh i'm not gonna go there like uh no yeah i think back to the original point is like what did Briggs get wrong about the murder rate versus uh, Felly's uh, uh, breakdown of it? Breakdown of it, like which is which is correct? I don't know. Um, from what yeah. I've learned so far uh, through this German thing, is that they're generally a bit more uh, relaxed after something happens. You know, yeah. I won't say yeah. what it is. We already talked about that. Yep. Yeah, but anyway, we're just at number 10 here. Number 10, damn. Yeah, it's going to be a long video, y'all. Hell yeah. Get get your popcorn. High crime. Germany has seen a rise in crime in the last five years. Okay, that's not true. Since he's talking about the statistics from 2018, five years would mean that there was a rise in crime since 2013, and that's not the case, as you can see here. To be fair, the crime rate did go up a little bit after 2013, so in 14, 15, and 16 it was rising, but then right in 2017 it went below the numbers from 2013 and has been decreasing ever since. The country okay. has an open door policy, which means anyone can wander into the country whenever they want. And they've learned this leads to more crime. Okay, Germany does not have an open door policy in that sense that people can literally just walk into our country and stay if they want to. We have taken in a lot of refugees, especially in 2015, which I'm assuming that's what Brix is referring to here, but those people had refugee status. It's not like anyone can just come to Germany and stay there forever if they want to. It's definitely easier to immigrate to Germany legally than immigrating to the US, but it's not like there aren't any rules. When you can't track people down, they tend to do stupid stuff. The crime rate in Germany... Um, you can track people down in Germany, actually. Other than in the US, where there's a census every 10 years, where people voluntarily submit information about where they live and other personal information, residents in Germany actually have to be registered at the Einwohnermeldeamt, the registration office. If you move to a new place, even if it's within the same city, you have to go there and register your new address by law, and refugees too are registered there with an address. The so, crime rate in Germany. So, what if you're a criminal? Can you just not? Or unless you're going to be a criminal that obeys the law. Like I, that's it what must I, I, must make it a lot easier for uh, to be tracked down. Yeah, things like that. It's just <sighs> I'm thinking faulty towers. Orders must be obeyed. Sorry, <laughs> orders I'm... must be obeyed. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> But, you know, it's just, it's, it's interesting. I, okay. These are, I feel like these are all vague generalizations and, and which that's all you have to go on until you're, you have the boots on the ground over there. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You can argue like the refugee status, you know, that's given to a lot of people, usually in our Northern European countries they they've taken a lot you know yeah. and and that refugee status kind of encompasses a lot of stuff right and i don't know i don't know i it's interesting it's interesting to me for me to see her reaction to some of these these um I, not a rebuttal would it be a consider a rebuttal kind of yeah this is kind of a rebuttal of that video a rebuttal not even a reaction it's more of a rebuttal but yeah I, but it's it's just interesting because okay okay she she's the one that I'm not questioning because she knows, right? She lived in Germany till yeah. 22. Yeah, you want to ask someone like this, so okay. I mean, I'm just I'm very I'm I'm very interested to see how she takes how this video goes. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll let it go. <laughs> it's gonna be a long effing video as is. Yeah, yeah. You say you're gonna shut up, but let's just give it a minute or so. 
Germany for 2018 was 6,710 crimes per every 100,000 residents. That's up from 4,200 per every 100,000 residents in 2014. And Okay, that's just a wrong number. The first one is correct. There were 6,710 crimes per 100,000 residents in 2018, but then he's saying that it went up from 2014, which is the year before the refugee crisis, and that's wrong. He says that there were 4,200 crimes per 100,000 residents in 2014, but it was actually 7,530. So it actually went down compared to 2014. Not sure where he got that wrong number from, 4,200, because I couldn't find that anywhere. And when the 2020 numbers come out, they're looking to be higher. There was. That's wrong again. The crime statistics for 2019 were actually just released this week, so after he published the video, but still the trend had shown that crime rates have been going down in Germany for years. And as expected, in 2019, Germany had 5.43 million crimes in total, which means the number decreased by 2.1% compared to 2018 and is the lowest number since 1992. There was wow. a sharp increase in the number of murders committed in Germany, with 901 murders recorded in 2018. That's the highest since 2000 when there was 930. Berl okay, sharp increase? I'm not sure if I would say it like that. First, the numbers that he mentioned are the numbers of attempted murders and not the number of people who were actually killed. I'm obviously not an expert in this field, but I just feel like that the number of attempted murders could vary a little bit from year to year, just depending on how cases are treated in court, whereas the number of people who were actually killed is definitely not open for interpretation from year to year. And that number did indeed go up in 2016 and 17, but it was still much lower than in the early 2000s and for 2019 it's actually the lowest in a very long time with 245 people killed in total. Berlin, Hamburg and Bremen had the highest regional crime rates in the whole country. Ask any German like I did and they will tell you it all changed in 2015. About the same time hundreds of thousands of refugees began entering the country from Warned Horn, Syria and other places like that. The number of Okay, well, as I just showed you, the crime rate did go up a little bit after 2015, that's true. But from my personal experience, what I actually observed on the streets, in society, I didn't actually see any more crime personally. Um, but what I did observe was that the way that crimes that were committed by people who were not German, so like refugees and other people who immigrated to Germany, were reported in the media, that changed a lot. So again, if you look at the numbers, the crime rate did go up a little bit bit in the years after 2015, but then it went to a new low after that and is now lower than the crime rate before 2015. Now, the number of murders. Now, now hear me out though, because I will stick up for, what's his name, Briggs? Yeah. He's talking about individual provinces or states or counties, right? Yeah. Not Germany as a whole. He said in these two specific areas, they went up. Yeah. Right? And that the graph that Feli has is Germany as a whole, right? I think that's yeah. the same graph we're showing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm just making sure before I put my foot in my mouth later on down the road. Mm -hmm. There you go. Murders increased by 14.6% and the unauthorized use of another person's body rose by 8%. You know what that is. I can't say it because I don't want to get demonetized. Okay, I'm not sure what numbers he's referring to here because I couldn't find those. But again, murders actually did go up a little bit after 2015, but are now lower than any number listed since the 90s. And what he means by unauthorized use of another person's body has actually been going up continuously for years, starting way before 2015. But this is something that's always stated in those reports, and we also all know this, that more and more cases are being reported nowadays. It doesn't necessarily mean that more things are happening. It's just more things are getting reported, which is good. You know, like the Me Too movement was in 2017. Of course, most of those cases still aren't reported to this day, but it means that these numbers aren't very reliable and also not comparable. Yeah, that last part, that's a little shock value uh, that Briggs added about the unauthorized use of other people's bodies. Like, yeah. yeah, that's a good way of putting it is more people are coming forward and reporting it and yeah. not it's not exactly going up. Yeah, it's or maybe a, it is. I don't know. It's that's just 
it's a bit wonky. Uh, it's a it's a fickle data point, and that's yeah. for anywhere. Yeah, you know that's I feel like that's for anywhere. So if yeah. if that's that's yeah, I don't know. Uh, but like you said, I think that's a that's a a shock value because it's about the right time in a video to add something to to retain viewership. Right at number ten. Uh, here we go, number yep. nine. Or number no. Yeah. <laughs> number nine, graffiti. A stroll through the streets of Berlin quickly reveal why it's sometimes referred to as the graffiti capital of Europe. When the oh, Berlin I didn't know that actually. Berlin Wall came down in the early 1990s. Graffiti artists and taggers had to find new places to apply their art. Now keep in mind, most of the time they're not artists, they're a-holes. Just about any building, wall, or surface has become fair game to these clowns. A task for Okay, just because any type of building or wall has become fair game doesn't mean that any type of building or wall has graffiti on them. Or spokesman estimated the property damage caused by graffiti in Berlin is about 35 to 50 million euros a year. Berlin's special anti-graffiti task force wasn't even formed until the early 1990s. The task force is underfunded and sort of useless. The German capital averages about 15 arrests a week for graffiti, with That's fines ranging from 100 euros, about $135 American, to several thousand euros. What they need to do is chain gang these dudes on a graffiti <laughs> cleanup detail. That That'll fix them. Can you imagine yeah. being chained to other dudes cleaning up graffiti you put on there a week before? All your friends coming by making fun of you? Yeah, that'll stop it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. Chain gang them. Hell yeah. That's something that they should totally do. Chain I don't know, gang man. Of graffiti artists. I personally don't mind graffiti. Yeah, I don't mind it either. Uh, it's it, it's a form of artistic expression. They're not really harming anything unless they prick freaking swastikas there. Well, as long as it's not like gang tagging, because then that's right. different. Then that's a way to mark your 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 territory. Right, putting um, up like an MS thirteen sign or something. Yeah, like yeah, tagging is is it's very uh, I would say synonymous with like gang culture here. You yeah. know, but there are some tactful pieces that are done. In fact, some some places, <laughs> the second time I mentioned a city in Baltimore that have commissioned really talented graffiti artists to graffiti a side of their building or paint. Yeah, but it's graffiti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's art. It's classified as art. Yeah. And I, I, I grew up near train tracks. And when a train would come by, several of the train cars had graffiti on them. Yeah. So that kind of normalized graffiti for me. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let's see what Philly's got to say about it. Okay, so I did not check those numbers, so I'm sure they're accurate, but I just don't really see why this would be an actual reason not to live in Germany. He also only mentioned Berlin, which is the capital of Germany, but it's not very representative for the rest of the country. I've personally never considered graffiti's a major problem in Germany or anything that like lowers the quality of life in any way. I mean, yeah. yes, especially in bigger cities, they definitely are on certain buildings and bridges and sometimes on trains, and I'm sure they do cause a lot of damage, but I just don't really see that as a major problem in Germany. <laughs> it's I think it's Briggs being a Karen. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go with Feli on this one. Yeah, it's not like that. Uh, what? Uh, there's a lot of graffiti in Berlin. Like, nope, not going there now. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, that's not that's not a reason. No, no. I, if that was a reason, I wouldn't visit any city I, ever. Yeah, I feel like that's bottom of the barrel. Like, he started strong, and now it's going to be like, what? They don't put ice in their drinks. Like, <laughs> that, I take that over graffitiing the buildings. Like, yeah. Like, wait, yeah. they don't? Never. You know, that's different. But graffiti, I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine with graffiti. Yeah, yeah. This next scene's got a public outhouse. Oh, God. Porta, porta, John, porta, toilet, whatever you call it. Number eight, pay to pee. This one doesn't have anything uh, to do with the red light district, which I'm sure that goes on there. <laughs> it's just that's not what I'm talking about here. Okay. You have to pay to use the public. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, psh. yeah, I think that's uh, that's Amsterdam. That's not. Uh, yeah. Berlin. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Uh, public restrooms in most of the cities in Germany. It's about 50 euros, 55 cents American. 
Okay, he just said it's about 50 euros, 55 cents American. Um, it's definitely not 50 euros. It's 50, <laughs> 50 euros. Good God. And to make the week. That'd be a very expensive piss. <laughs> that would be too much. People would be keeling over dead if they like, oh, no, I'm not paying no 50 euros. And I like how it's like 50 euros or 50 cents American. Like, damn, what did our... When did our when did our dollar get to be so strong then? Like I doubt it, bro. Yeah, no. I <laughs> I think he meant to say like fifty P or something. Fifty P maybe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just misspoke there. Fifty euros. Jesus Christ, dude. That's one expensive P. What's the toilet made out of? Gold? Yeah. yeah. Uh Wee oui, wee, oui, as my son used to call it. A couple of coins ensures that the attendants are making the money that they need to make it worth their while to keep these places clean. They're very clean. You have to pay everywhere, from a train station, stores, and even to restaurants. Airports. Okay, um, yes, you have to pay at a lot of places, but especially with restaurants and stores, I feel like I hardly ever see that. If anything, I feel like it's at restaurants and stores that are located at a place where they know that a lot of people are going to use their restrooms that aren't actually customers, if that makes sense. But it's not very common at a restaurant. Like if you're eating at the restaurant and you use their restroom, you won't have to pay for it. Ports are the rare exception to the pay to pee rule. If you ever hear someone say WC or water closet in Germany, they're referring to the restroom. WC is what we call it. Because it's like the size of a closet and there's water in there, I guess. Or you're making water. Who knows? Okay, so yes, paying to use the restroom is a thing in Germany. And I know that a lot of people who visit Germany from other places complain about that, but it's not always mandatory, as I just said. So especially at rest stops on highways and sometimes at train stations, this actually is a thing that there's a system in place where you actually have to pay. There's going to be a turnstile and you have to put in usually 70 cents to go through the turnstile. But then afterwards, you're going to get 50 cents back as a coupon that you can use at any of the connected stores. But those bathrooms are always extremely clean, so that's what you get in return. For regular restrooms, though, it's either free or there's gonna be a person from the cleaning staff sitting outside the restroom with a little tipping plate, and when you leave, it's common courtesy to give them some of your change. And since Germans still use a lot of cash to this day, people usually do have change on them. In very rare cases, they have a sign sitting there saying how much they're asking for, but in my life, it's never actually been a problem if you don't have enough change on you or if you don't have anything at all, you can still use the restroom, just maybe say you're sorry when you leave. Say you're sorry. I will Blast never for apologize for going to the bathroom in a bathroom where there's a designated place to bathroom. And I bathroom, I feel like that's a mission accomplished. <laughs> I'm not ever apologizing for accomplishing my goal. <laughs> like, whether I pay you or not is beyond the point. Yeah. And with all that sausage, pretzels, and beer around you know uh y yeah you're you're lucky i'm not going elsewhere yeah 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 because that if <laughs> yeah but I, but i get it though because hey listen i will the the price definitely is used to maintain the bathroom yeah and so that is a very understandable and that is okay with me if yeah. I had to pay 50 cents and make sure that bathroom is immaculate, then yeah, all day, worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it would be like the Cadillac of the of bathrooms. Yeah. Is the ones in Germany. Yeah. The only, That's... it's like Bucky's. Like, you've been to Bucky's before. Did you, did you use the bathroom while you were there? Um, I don't even remember. I don't think so. Actually, I don't think so. Oh, because they have some of the best bathrooms in the entire world. That's yeah, the next. It, that's the next time I had to I had to stop in the bathroom. It's it's a Cadillac of commodes right there. Hell yeah! So just saying, it would be. I I guess they borrowed a lot of German uh, ingenuity with that because a lot of German immigrants were from Texas, went to Texas. Uh, so maybe that was a leftover idea: is making hmm. the bathrooms immaculate. Huh? It's a smart. In my, I mean, in my book, that's smart. You have a public facility, you charge for it. You know, I know it's a little bit inconvenient, but in the long run, it's clean. All That's right. what matters. 100%. Number seven, long ass words. German, as in the case with most <laughs> Germanic languages, gets out of control with compound nouns. <laughs> Go ahead, say it, man. Oh my God. 
Yes, I love that. Oh, yeah, don't <laughs> don't move to Germany. Why? They have long ass words, bro. Oh, in that case, fuck that place. You know, like what? <laughs> I love that he put that on the list. Oh my god, we gotta read the comment section of his original video. Yeah, I bet yeah. people are up in arms. Yeah, uh, long ass words. <laughs> That's so ignorant. I love that. It's just so stupid. Oh. If we remember to do it, we'll go back and read yeah. those comments. <laughs> Jesus. They yeah. combine multiple words into one long word to name or describe something. This is totally weird to English speakers. It's almost like they're doing it to F with us. I... <laughs> okay, so this is true, but I promise we're not doing it to F with you. The reason why German words can get so long is that when we form a new word out of two existing words, we leave out the space. So while in English you say police car and spell it as two words, we say Polizeiauto in German and spell it as one word. I swear to God, at 80 letters, the longest word ever composed in German is, and I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I'm going to spell it for you. Buckle up. D-O-N-A-U-D-A-M-P-F-S-C-H-I-F-F-F-A-H-R-T-S-E-L-E-K-T-R-I-Z-I-T-A-T-E-N-H-A-U-P-T-B-E-T-R-I-E-B-S-W
Biden expressed his views bluntly in an 1880 essay. He said, The German language is awful. He argued a gifted person could learn English in 30 hours, French in 30 days, and it would take German 30 years. Okay, German is definitely difficult to learn, but I would not say it takes 30 years to learn it. Definitely a few years and then some pretty big commitment to become fluent. But I do know a lot of Americans, or I don't want to say a lot. I do know Americans who are fluent in German and don't even have an accent, so it is possible. All right, and that was another video that I saw and that I recommended. It was like Pennsylvania Dutch. Like a lot of them speak, that's a German style, and apparently she can understand that. If y'all want us to check that out, let us know below. That would be an interesting one, because that's technically U.S.-based, but because it's from over there. Yeah, and we also know that they can make some pretty damn good food. And they furniture. Are, and furniture, yeah. Those Dutch markets, there was one in Annapolis, there's one in Laurel. Mm, good stuff. Yep. Number six, brutal taxes. Germany's strong public services, employee protection, healthcare services, and being a welfare state come at a cost. Taxes here are some of the highest in the world, with those earning a little over 52,000 euro, which is about 58,000 American, paying about 42% in income tax. That's then true. you have a social security payment and a 19% rate on value added tax. Yeah, Professionals yeah. should be ready to say goodbye to almost half their paychecks. You may find your mandatory social security contribution costing more than your rent. In addition to this, there's a solidarity surcharge, which is a 5.5% tax to cover the continuing costs of integrating the states of the former East Germany. As many is what that's called. The other countries, Germany allows a variety of deductions that can lower your total taxable income, but still, it's pretty brutal. Yeah. In addition to the various forms of income tax, there's also a series of sales tax that significantly impact both individuals and businesses. Now get this, this is a great idea. They actually tax the churches. You know that's a hustle. I mean, it's great if you want to <laughs> not tax the churches, but far too many churches are taking advantage of this. It's kind of a joke at this point. All in all, there are approximately 30 different types of taxes including taxes on inheritance and real estate motor vehicles also. What I'm trying to say is Germany is like my cousin's ex-wife. <laughs> it gets half your money and has doubled in size since the fall of the Soviet Union. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's... I'm sorry. Wow. Wow. Uh, so I guess he wasn't a fan. That's great. Uh. <laughs> my, what do you say? Like my cousin's ex-wife my cousin's ex-wife <laughs> got half of everything and has doubled in size since the soviet union uh, look i have an ex-wife too i'm not saying that kind of stuff about her oh man plus i couldn't say that but anyway yeah. i'm going down a slippery slope here but uh, let's talk about the taxes here that's uh, so this is real this is real this is like out of all the craziness that we we've, we've just this is this is the the one fact that I would have everyone pay attention to. You know, this is one of those first questions I ask if I'm going to move over somewhere. Like, is taxes? Is taxes? How is it? You know, but yeah, that's but interesting. It, 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 they but they seem to go towards a lot of you know good stuff over there. I mean, I'll let Feli explain it a little bit, and I'll research judging. But well, my guess is that they, it goes towards actually go towards things that make Germany great and better. If if the cost of living is low, which I highly doubt. You know what I mean? I cuz mm -hmm. I feel like Germans pride themselves on 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 very quality things, quality yeah. made things. Right. So and that doing, comes at a price. Yeah, and doing it efficiently too. Yeah. So. And so I'm thinking numbers like okay, if I if I give up let's say 40% of my my income that goes to reasonable things it makes sense but then what's left can i live off of that yeah that's yeah. the real question yeah. you know Let, let's see what philly has to say about it it's true that germany does have really high taxes so i guess that actually is a valid reason not to live in germany but you do also get a lot in return as a resident like free education for example a good and affordable healthcare system good infrastructure and so on and yes churches are being taxed in germany but it's not just the churches it's also the residents if they're registered as a church member remember how in my five things part two video i mentioned that in germany you're never asked for your race on 
platforms? Well, what we do have, though, that isn't a thing in the US, is that you're sometimes asked for your religious denomination on forms. And if you're baptized, you're automatically registered as a member of either the Catholic or the Protestant church in Germany, and you have to pay church taxes. If you don't want to do that, you have to actively leave the church, so like end your membership. But if you want to get married in a church, it's a requirement that at least one of the two partners is a church member. Number oh five. My God. Man, there's, there's, this video is being shown by w at least one person that lives in the evangelical South where there's a church almost on every street. If we had <laughs> revenue from all of those churches, we would be living in a fucking utopia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Crazy. And, and 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 that you have to register as either Catholic or Protestant if you've been baptized. And, and you have to pay a church tax. Yeah. And then the catch is the catch is and if you're if you're not a member of the church and someday you might want to get married, to get married in a church, you gotta be married to someone that's been paying those church taxes. Yeah. That's wow crazy. That's well, that would, that's wild. That would never happen in the states. <laughs> that would never. Be, oh, oh God! Could you imagine the uproar? It oh. would be like nothing you'd ever heard of before. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's both crazy. of us, I think, would have very uh, different reactions to it. <sighs> I I would just sit there with a beer and a penguin and just watch that watch it burn to the ground. And I, that's just me though. Oh no, I I'll be with you. I, who do you oh, think you stole the penguin? Yeah, yeah, steal the yeah, yeah, steal the penguin. Yeah. So you don't yeah. just catch one in the wild around here. Right, right. Go up to the zoo, something yep. like that. But um, yeah, no, that, that's that's pretty interesting. That's actually very interesting. Uh, that that the church get uh, taxed. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. That blew my freaking mind, man. Mm. Germans love their cash. Anybody used to carrying a wallet full of plastic should know this. Many shops in Germany only accept payment in cash, and offering a debit card will just get them to shake their head at you and tell you no or point to one of their, you know, ATM machines where you gotta get the cash and give it to them. And those ATMs, as we all know, have pretty steep fees. This is changing a little bit, but they're well behind U.S. and most other industrial countries. Germans simply find it easier to keep track of their spending when they use cash. A study found that the average German wallet contains about 103 physical euros, about $115, more than three times lie. the figure in France. Cash is still a means of payment in some 80% of the point of sale transactions in Germany. What it is is Germans, they don't trust a lot. <laughs> they don't trust a lot of technology, apparently. They, it's it's privacy it and the rule of state. They're just very against that stuff. So they like to use their cash and keep their transactions to them themselves. Of all the purchases made in Germany in 2018, just 20% were made with cards. That's wow. the lowest of any country. Okay, so first of all, if you're interested in this topic, you should definitely watch my video on money and payment differences, linked in the info box below. It's true that Germans still primarily pay with cash when it comes to everyday purchases like at a store or a restaurant, but it's not true that we don't trust technology. We definitely use cards a lot less, but bigger payments like rent or bills or mortgages and things like that are almost always made via online banking, much more than in the US. Making a big payment with cash would actually seem sketchy to us, and checks are almost non-existent in Germany. It's also not true that you can almost never pay with your card at the store. You usually can, actually. The only exceptions would be things like little kiosks or bakeries or things like that. And at restaurants, it's often not possible at all, or there's often a minimum purchase requirement. No. Yeah, that's uh, that's interesting on, on both you know sides of both Germany and the U.S. Like here in 2024, I can pretty much use my card anywhere, even mm -hmm. at you know small mom and pop places. You could still use your card. Uh, yep. The technology has come that far in in small town USA. Uh, but you know, I, I I just no matter where you are in the world, just having seeing the physical money in front of you will make you either not spend it or spend it all. Yeah. Yeah. And but yeah, like you, like you said, I spent, I went to um, a farmer's market the other last week yeah. and I was able to use my card. 
Everyone. Yeah. I mean, there was we, the same can be said if you flip it around for over here. It's like you whip out cash. People are like, whoa, 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 whoa. Just do you have a card? Is it, you know, is it, they prefer card transactions over uh, cash. Yeah, it's just it's, heck, you just use your phone. I have yeah. you know Google Pay or Crazy. well, most people have Apple Pay. You don't even need to carry a wallet with you yeah. anymore. And yes, uh, most big transactions, rent, mortgage, are done online banking. Not you know, yeah, pay them in cash. Yeah, I pay with gold. Just take the little bit of gold that I found. Here it is. Yeah, yeah, be enough. Here, I'll transfer you some Bitcoin too. Bitcoin. Yeah. Right. Yeah, <sighs> man. Number four, winters are too cold. The German winter is notoriously long, gray, and cold. The average daily temperature is around zero degrees Celsius, which is 32 Fahrenheit. It's also rainier and windier because of the Atlantic Ocean and cold air masses from Russia. They also get these cold waves from Siberia where temperatures can plunge to minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is minus four or five Fahrenheit in much of Germany. The summers are nice and it's a great time to visit Germany. From mid-May to September, you might actually forget how bad the winter was. December is one of the coldest months in Germany with chances of snow relatively good like every single day and temperatures get below freezing for most of the month. My uncle was stationed in Germany for about six years I believe and he said he'd never seen winters like that. Just bone chilling where your bones ache. <laughs> okay, this is actually pretty far away from the truth. Germany is not known for amazing weather obviously and it does rain a lot but I've lived in Germany for 22 years of my life and what he just described is not what our winters are like. In Munich, which is like an hour away from the Alps, we definitely did have winters with a lot of snow when I was a kid, but it's really becoming less every single year. In the past few years, the winters there have actually almost always been exactly the same as here in Cincinnati. So if you know oh. what Cincinnati winters are like, you know what it's like in Munich. In January oh. 2019, Munich actually had a lot of snow, so much that trees collapsed and streets were closed and stuff like that. But then this past winter, they actually had no no snow at all. And snow almost every single day in December. I mean, I wish we haven't had a white Christmas in Munich in years. I don't honestly even remember the last time we did. Um, it's usually been really warm on Christmas these past few years. Well, Regarding the numbers that Briggs mentioned. Yeah, I can't remember a white Christmas ever. But, you know, that's that's location where she is. Right. You go right. all the way up north Germany. Yeah, that's oh, that's the same thing like over here, you know. It'd be like someone from Florida making a video about their winners, yeah. you know, opposed to someone from New York talking about their winners. Yeah, yeah. Same country, completely. They winter different. Yeah, I was I was just looking um trying to compare the long longitude of Germany with where it is in the U.S. and it's about on par with you know, with Cincinnati, Cleveland. Even like New York and Southern Pennsylvania, yeah. it's it's very on point with that. So yeah, I just I, that's that's a ridiculous point. That's yeah. a ridiculous point to make. Like the, yeah, the southern part of a country is going to be a little bit warmer. Yeah, that's just a given. Uh, that's just a given. No matter where you are. I mean, I, I guess if you're in the southern hemisphere, that's quite opposite. <laughs> the more north, the southern you get, the colder it gets. Yeah, yeah, something like that. The average temperature in the winter in Germany is definitely not 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Not sure where he got that number from. The real number is 4.1 degrees Celsius, which equals about 39 degrees Fahrenheit. That's actually about the same average winter temperature as in Tennessee, for example. In Ohio, the average winter temperature is 30 degrees Fahrenheit, so much colder. And yes, I actually have experienced temperatures of as cold as minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit in Munich, but that was maybe like twice in my life, and I have experienced that in the US too. So it seems like Brick's uncle must have lived in Germany decades ago and apparently in a region that's especially cold and I would assume that he's probably from a warmer region in the US not sure number three 
air conditioning. Germans oh. are very environmentally conscious and would shy away from using an appliance that uses so much electricity. Less than 10% of all European households have air conditioning. That's compared to 90% in the United States. Yep, that's it. That's it's official. Lot. I will never live in Germany. I love air conditioning like a sailor loves his rum. I've actually caught myself wanting to write epic poems about my air conditioning during hot summer days. European air conditioners are already among the world's most efficient and these people still won't use them. Meanwhile, at my house, I'm looking for AC that uses more power. I find it hard to communicate properly in hot weather. I don't know what that is. I need it cool. I can never live in Germany during the summer. Air conditioners' energy consumption was among the reasons cited when German officials rejected proposals to install cooling systems in the schools. Okay, so this is true. We usually don't have air conditioning in our houses. If you'd like to know more about this topic, you should check out my video on six things that the US can learn from Germany because I actually talked quite a lot about air conditioning and windows in that video. And to Germans, it's not just that air conditioning needs a lot of power. We also just don't like it as much for some reason. Sometimes it definitely can be exhausting in the summer without air conditioning, but German summers aren't as hot and as long anyways. It's usually only hot for like a few weeks. Also, our houses are usually built out of bricks, which means that they're insulated a lot better, which means that they don't heat up as quickly in the summer. And also what we do is that we open our windows a lot at night when it's cooler and just let the cool air inside. But yeah, if you need air conditioning in your life, Germany or Europe in general is definitely not the right place to move to. Oh. Yeah, take away AC, bro. I, I don't know, man. I would, yeah. I, I don't, that is a necessity. Like, yeah. call me whatever. I've been in those places without AC and I've remembered the places I've been with AC. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like, Cause your brain didn't melt in those places yeah, with AC. Yeah. Without AC, holy crap. That's, that's rough. And like open the windows to let the heat storm in. No, thank you. You know, I get it. Northern Europe. I get it. You guys get a pass, you know, like I get it. You're, why would you spend a lot of money? Cause they're not cheap for a, a, something you that uses a high energy and you'd only, only really need for like two months. I get that. I understand that. But down here, like that South Maryland and South, you, yo, take out the AC people start dying. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, I'm not even playing. Yeah, pretty much. Here in North Carolina, it's the same, too. <sighs> and and it's even worse for you in Maryland because you're closer to water. And and the common saying is it's not the heat, it's the humidity that oh, gets you. 100%. Give me 100 degrees in dry heat, then 90 degrees with 90% humidity. Mm -hmm. Any day. Yep. Mm. Number two, everything's closed on Sundays. Sundays are a day of rest for Germans and most shops you'll find are closed. Doesn't have anything to do with religion. It's more of a tradition. There's a law which restricts loud noises such as vacuuming, drilling, slapping each other around, or playing loud music, even in your own home on Sundays, especially between the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. and 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Play your stuff too loud then or get weird, you're gonna get a visit from the man. Now this holds true for tourists and hotels. Don't be loud on Sundays. Other than shops that are like in gas stations, train stations, and airports, most shops are closed on Sundays. There's a store closing law that was put into place in 1956, making it a legal requirement for people to have Sundays off. They aren't big on overworking in Germany, which is good if you're a resident. Kind of sucks if you're a tourist, you know, looking for something on a Sunday. <laughs> Okay, so this is true. Most stores are closed on Sundays, but places like restaurants and movie theaters and those kind of places are open. And it definitely did have religious reasons originally, not so much nowadays, so that's true. It's not like Germans need that day off to all go to church on Sunday. That's not really what a lot of Germans do. I agree that it can be very inconvenient, um, especially if you're used to the circumstances here in the US or other countries where you can always go shopping. Um, and it does require some planning for sure. But on the other hand, it can also be really nice because it can be a day where you just spend some time with friends and family because the vast majority of all people in Germany 
won't have to work that day. What he said about the law that you can't be loud on Sundays, that's actually true for the whole day on Sunday and also wow. any other holiday. And what he said about the night thing that you can't be loud from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. or I think it's actually 6 a.m. Um, that's actually true for every single day, not just Sunday. So I guess it's even more extreme than what he said. Here we go, wow. number one. Yeah. Wow. So don't okay. be loud. Don't be loud at night. I mean, that's just common sense, you know? It is. I wonder if that's like a city ordinance. Because I doubt that they're enforcing that in the countryside. Right. Cause like in the big cities of Berlin, definitely Berlin, because that's a big nightclub city. Like, there's no way that you are closing down at 10 p.m. because you got to think about the neighbors. They probably partying all night long. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, that's interesting. I mean, but that we have that kind of stuff here, too. We yeah. have the the noise ordinance, the the noise control, like we have that. That's a thing, but not for like let's say a nightclub or an establishment, right? But that's just being a, a decent human being, right? Not being a jackass yeah. to your neighbors. One and number one. Nazis are still around. Germany still has Nazis. This time around, they're not paid by the government. So that's a good thing. More than 4,000 attacks on foreigners have occurred since 2015. Some with Molotov cocktails. It's always nice. I read about these weird 1940s books that may have helped give rise to this type of mentality. The books say mothers need to ignore their baby's emotional needs. Now, here's where what? it gets weird. Joanna Harr, I believe that's her name, a physician whose books were written during the Nazi era urged women to distance themselves from their young children. Here in the States, we don't do that until they're like 30 and don't have a job. The books have reached nearly biblical status in some nursery schools and childcare centers over the years. The the Domestic Intelligence Service estimates that there were 12,700 violent right-wing extremists in the country in 2017. Yeah, so that's not a good thing for Germany. Keep that in mind if you're going to visit or move there. But I just found that whole avoiding your kid's emotional need thing is weird. I agree. That is weird. Um, but okay. There was a lot in there, so where should I start? So it's true that there have been a lot of attacks on foreigners, especially since the refugee crisis in 2015, but also before that. But fortunately, the majority of all Germans does not identify with that at all. So it's really not like you go to Germany and the first thing you'll see are Nazis. Yes, there are neo-Nazis in Germany and there is a political party called NDP that has a lot in common with the original Nazi party, NSDAP but it's very small and it's not represented in any of the state parliaments in Germany or in the federal parliament. In the early 2000s, there was actually a murder series in Germany conducted by a Nazi group called NSU, National Socialist Underground. Um, the trial was very prominent in the German media and I think in international media too, so maybe you've heard about it. But unfortunately, there are neo-Nazis in almost all European countries and in the US as well. Now, the book that Briggs mentioned is definitely not used in Germany nurseries or child care centers anymore. He said the books have reached biblical status or something like that. Well, that was during the Third Reich and post-World War II, but that was like over 60 years ago. Those books haven't really been around since like the 70s or 80s, the latest. And I personally had never heard of the book that he mentioned by Johanna Hara. I looked it up, of course. But um, yeah, it hasn't really been a thing since like the 70s. I'm sure neo-Nazis Which... do read those books. I'm sure he's right. Which, which, okay, so if it hasn't been around for the, until the 70s or 80s, since the 70s or 80s, that means if you're in our generation, your parents raised you like that. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. what that means. Yeah. Maybe it's not accessible now, but you were maybe, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not trying to draw any comparisons, but I'm saying 70s or 80s, that's not that far back. Right. It's not that far back, especially when you're talking with hit about history and stuff like that's not that's just a, a stone throw away. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, to these to, to us, but to the uh, younger generations coming up, they don't know anything, know anything about that. No, no. Mm -mm. Yeah. 
hasn't really been a thing since like the 70s. I'm sure neo-Nazis do read those books, I'm sure he's right about that, but neo-Nazis don't represent modern German culture at all. Now what he said about over 12,000 violent right-wing extremists in Germany in 2017, that's actually true. However, that number refers to people who are ready to use violence, which means that not all of them actually have been violent. And I'm not saying that this isn't a problem for Germany, it definitely is, and so is the rise of another right-wing party, the AFD in Germany, but 12,000 out of 82 million is still a rather small number and this definitely isn't something that you'll see at every street corner in Germany. So I'm not sure if I agree with his ranking here that this is really the number one reason not to live in Germany, but to each their own. All right, so that's today's list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. You know, maybe you want to stay away from Germany. At least uh, know what you're getting into before you go there. Anyway, don't forget all the links below. If you like what we do here, please subscribe. Give the video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other. <laughs> Be nice to each other. Okay, so this was a rather long reaction video, but I hope you guys learned something and who knows, maybe you agreed with him a lot more than you agreed with me. But I have to say that out of those 10 reasons not to live in Germany, I think I really only agree with two of them as valid reasons why I really think that would be a reason not to live in Germany. And that is the high taxes and yep. the weather in Germany, even though his description of our winter was a little bit off, but truth is that the weather isn't the best in Germany. It does rain a lot, it's not very reliable. So I'm actually very glad that I got away from that. Other than that, I'd say that maybe air conditioning would be a valid point, but I personally really only miss that at very hot days in Germany and whenever I want to work out at home. And when you're used to how convenient everything is in the US, it's definitely annoying that stores are closed on Sundays in Germany and also the normal store hours are a lot shorter too. So what did you guys think? Would you still live in Germany or at least visit it or did this video pretty much scare you off? Let me know in the comments below. I don't, it would take more than that to scare me off. Get out of here. That's just a, that, when you do a top 10, it's opinionated. And right. It's a lot of it is the opinion of the, the person making the video Briggs in this and, case. Until the freaking it's on a list right for americans not to visit it's not safe then i'm probably gonna go i would be fine going there there's more pros to germany than cons yeah. i would i oktoberfest is still on my bucket list uh, and of course berlin and uh Nuremberg, whatever the long ass track is and the autobahn that's still on my list yeah. uh little things like that are not gonna scare me off no i'll have to open the window at, 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 during summertime and maybe but, come around christmas even though it might be very beautiful around christmas but you know, to live there is a different that's a different psychology you have to think about it all right to visit that's a no-brainer to live yeah. there i would definitely say the main point if you're a smart human being would definitely look at the taxes first yeah. and then the weather taxes that's, and weather that's huge because that's money weather money and weather everything else is is, is secondary secondary but hey hey it's good to know these things good to hear her perspective on what he was saying and a lot of yeah. it she, at least she had a chance to have the rebuttal um, and you can even argue and this is my olive branch to people that either agree or disagree with Feli, like it's her opinion as well the piece mm -hmm. is opinionated. Her view on that piece is opinionated too. Yeah. For her own life. So, right. The only difference is one is, uh, I guess, has experience from relatives that lived in Germany and still lives in the US. And the other grew up and lived the life in Germany. Yeah. So two so, totally different uh, viewpoints. Yep. Yeah, different viewpoints that are both totally valid to them. And yeah. definitely going to be interested to see what the comments say about this. Because it would take a lot more. Like, I'll tell you something. Um, I went to Venezuela. It was safer than going to Colombia. Because Colombia okay. was the kidnapping capital of the world. Now that shit's changed. Now it's, yeah. do not go to Venezuela if you're not from there and have people there and have armed security. And then Colombia is wide open now. So it's God. like, it's, you know, countries on a list of, like, a do not travel list for US citizens, that's the list I adhere to. Yeah, is Germany on that list? No. no. So it's gonna take a lot more to scare us off Germany. Yeah.
it, yeah, what makes it on that kind of list? And that list is like, will probably not come get you if you get in trouble. That's why they have that list. Yeah. The only danger I see is not knowing what you're doing on the Autobahn and eating too much uh, sausage and drinking too much beer. And not having any change in your pocket. And then no change in your <laughs> pocket for the bathroom. Yeah. God about that part. Damn. Yep. But anyway, overall, this is a great video. It's a mm -hmm. great video. Great talking points, honestly. Let us know below to our German friends. What do you love about living in Germany and what do you not like so much about living in Germany? How, let's keep that conversation going. You know? Let us know what's the top thing that would you would tell us if we were to live. Would the tax thing be number one? Let me know in the comments section your number one pro and number one con and defend yeah. it. Yep, that sounds good to me. And after that, consider subscribing, watching another video, and what else, Dan? Unplug and do something legendary. See y'all next time. Later, guys. Fellas, we can be that mistake. Let's do this.